Hello guys. Today's session first we will see what is EC2, right, and how to create a EC2 machine, right, and then after we will talk about what is AWS SageMaker and how to create a SageMaker notebook. So in last class, so we have covered this uh, S3, right? Uh, if you remember in the last class, uh, we have covered this S3, how to create our S3 bucket. And in the today's session, first we will talk about EC2. So EC2 is an another service of AWS that we can use to create a virtual server. So this service basically we use to deploy an application. I right? uh, suppose uh, if we have a uh, ML application and that ML application we want to deploy somewhere on AWS cloud. Right. So uh, at a time we can use here EC2. So EC2 provides compute capacity in the cloud, and this capacity is secure and resizable based on the user requirement. So on the basis of uh, machine requirement, uh, we can just create a machine, right? And then after we can deploy our ML application. It helps deploy apps quickly without buying hardware upfront and deploy virtual servers as required and at scale. It means uh, we don't need to buy a server right for deploying our ML application. Right, we can just uh, take a server on rent, right? or we can say uh, we can just take a virtual server on rent. It is a web service that provides secure, resizable compute capacity in the cloud. EC2 is a service that allows you to simply rent a server in the cloud. So we can create a virtual server in the cloud with the help of EC2, right? And then after we can deploy our ML application. So let's see how we can create a EC2 instance. Okay, so this is my AWS console. And uh, here uh, you can search about uh, EC2, virtual servers in the cloud. And here you can see the reason not Virginia. So we are going to create a server in this region. But if you want to create a uh, create a virtual server in some another region, you can select it. You can see here we are getting some options, right? So you can uh, select a region where you want to create your EC2 machine. So currently uh, we want to create our EC2 machine in this region, North Virginia. Okay, so here you can see this option, instance running zero. Okay, and here we are getting this option launch instance. So let's click on this. And first we have to pass some name. So demo server. Demo server. Okay, and after we can use our OS image that comes under free time. So here are some images. So let's select this one, Ubuntu. Okay, and here you can also see the options free tire eligible. So let's let's select this one. Okay, and this OS also comes under free tar. Right? Okay, and then after uh, instance type. So instance type we can use uh, T2 micro. We also have some other options you can see, but here uh, we have selected the free tar account, right? So that's why we have to select the instance type that comes under this free tar category. So let's, uh, okay, so let's go ahead with T T1 micro. And uh, here we can create a key pair login, right? Uh, because we want to access the terminal of the, of this machine, right? We want to access the terminal here. So let's create a, you new uh, new pair. So let's pass some name here. ML one. Okay, and the format of this key will be a dot pem, and that we can use for SSH connection. Okay. And if you are using Windows, then you can uh, uh, okay, then you can select this format dot tpk. Here you can see. Here I've got this file dot pem ml one dot pem. After that, here uh, we can create a security group. Okay, so, uh, where we can allow the SHS traffic. 
if you want to deploy some uh, web application, you can also allow HTTP traffic or also HTTPS traffic, right? According to your requirement. Okay, but uh, currently we want to just access the terminals, right? So we will just allow SSH traffic. The rest of the information we will use as it. Okay, now just click on this launch instance. So here you can see the summary number of instance. And this is the software image, virtual server instance type, and new security group where we have just allowed this SSH traffic, and the storage volume is 8 GB. Now let's click on this. Here you can see the demo server instance ID, and the state is pending. Right now, it will take some time to start this service. You can see the instance state is running. Or oh, let me just close this one and uh, instances. Here you can see. Okay, and here you can see the complete detail about this machine. So here you have public ID, you have private ID, you have public ID for DNS, instance state is running, right? Host name type this one. Right. You have all the required information about this machine here. You can see. Okay, and now we want to connect our host machine with this virtual server. So here we have option connect, and here we have some commands. Right. So these two commands basically we can run from our host machine terminal. So let me open the terminal. This and uh, download in the download section let's and uh, here we have file ml1.pem so first we will change the mode of this file then file name okay and uh, next we will uh, copy this command ssh hyphen i then the file and then the DNS name. So let's copy this and paste it here. Yes, permission denied. Okay, here we have got this error. Okay, let's uh, CD download. Okay, uh, I think we have to run this command from the same directory where we have this ml1.pem file. Here you can see, now here we have got the access of this virtual machine. Okay. Now here you can deploy your application. First you can install the necessary requirements. You can install all the tools, all the libraries, right? That will require to deploy your application, okay? Okay, you can also see Python is on install here, right? So first you can install all the necessary libraries and then after you can deploy your application. So I'm going to uh, exit from this terminal. Okay. The next very important thing that we have to, once we are done, then we have to terminate this instance, right? Otherwise we have to pay some extra charges. So this is a very important step. So once we are done, then just first stop this machine and terminate it. Here you can see we are getting the option stop. It will take a few time. And after that, you can just terminate this instance. Let me refresh this page. But I think we have uh, uh, a direct option to terminate this machine, I think that is a terminate instance, you can see. Okay, so it stopped and let me check what option here we have. You can see terminate instance, terminate it. Okay, next thing uh, we will discuss that is Sage Maker, right? Where we will run all the machine learning code. The next service is AWS Sage Maker. You can see this machine has terminated. Close this one, close this one. 
So here we will implement all the machine learning code using Amazon CH Maker. And uh, here we have an easy option that is create a notebook. Right. We also have some other options like a uh, uh, CHMK Studio, CHMK Canvas, right? But here we will use a very easy option that is Notebook. What is CHMK Studio and what is CHMK Canvas that we will discuss in the further classes. But here we will implement all the machine learning code using this Notebook instance. So let's see. Uh, so here you can see uh, now there is currently no uh, notebook instance. So just click on this, create a notebook instance. Here we can pass some name. So just uh, pass a name. Hello, demo. So here we have to pass a unique name. Hello, demo. And uh, next here uh, we can mention the role i am role or we can also create a new role here right so basically this uh, we do to uh, to just uh, give the permission of this instance to access the data from the s3 bucket here you can see we are getting two options any s3 bucket or any specific s3 bucket here uh, we can just give this one any s3 bucket create role you can see okay now our uh, rest of the information we will use as it default and let's click on this create notebook instance okay so here you can see the notebook instance type is ml.t3 medium and that we have also discussed uh in the i think the first session where we have seen the things that comes under the free tire right so in the free tire uh, we get to this uh, instance type mlt3 medium right and also we get some others but now we will use only this mlt3 medium and for the inference here we will use the default one none okay now just click on this create notebook instance here we can see what instance type we can select another free car so aws Retire here uh, under the section Amazon Sage Maker. Uh, you can see 250 hours per month of ML T3 medium, right? On the student notebooks, or 250 hours per month ML T2 or T3 medium on the demand notebook instances. So here we are using uh, this demand notebook instances. So either we can use T2 medium or we can use T3 medium. And uh, M5.4x large, you can use for data wrangler. Means uh, if you want to do some data processing, you can use this instance. And uh, here for the training, we can use M4.x large or M5.x large. And for the inference, we can use M5.x large or M4.x large. Okay. okay, let me just refresh this. It will take some time. Okay, and uh, here you can see while uh, while using EC2. So here we are getting uh, 750 hours per month of Linux, Arch, EL, or SLES, or uh, here we are using, uh, we can use T2 micro, T3 micro instances, right? Depend on the reason. And if we are using Windows, then we can either use T2 micro or T3 micro. Okay, let's check again. Refresh this. After this uh, demo, we will talk about NumPy. So NumPy is a Python library uh, that we use to deal with and dimension array. But here in machine learning, uh, we will see only one dimension array or two dimension array. So we have a library that is NumPy. Here now you can see the status is in service means now we can open our Jupyter notebook. We also have another option that is Jupyter Lab, but here uh, uh, we will use Jupyter notebook only. So after this in C two, 
now here we are talking about Amazon SageMaker. So SageMaker is a fully managed machine learning workflow platform that provides services on data labeling, model building, model training, hyperparameter twinning, and deployment. So all these things we can do easily with the help of SageMaker. SageMaker allows data scientists and developers to build a scalable AI ML model easily and efficiently. Models could be deployed in production at much faster rate and with a fraction of the cost. So using SageMaker, we can prepare the data, we can build the model, we can train and tune, and we can also deploy the model. So all these things we can do with the help of SageMaker. You can see here we have got this page and let's create a Jupyter Notebook file. We are getting different options here, PySpark, and Unispark, then MaxNet, Python 3, PyTorch. Means if you want to use PyTorch, you can select this one. If you want to use TensorFlow for machine learning, you can select this one. But currently here, we will work on Conda Python 3. So as a beginner, you can start with SageMaker Notebook Instance. Right. As a beginner, you can start with SageMaker Notebook Instances. You also have some other options like Studio, Studio Lab, Canvas, and R Studio. But as a beginner, you can start first with Notebook Instances. Okay. It will take a few time. So here we are getting upload option, right? Uh, means if you want to upload uh, existing Jupyter Notebook file that you have in your system that you can also upload here, right? And also you can upload your data set. Just wait for a few minutes. Here we are getting a upload option. If you want to upload some file, you can upload it from this source. Uh, still, it will take some time. Okay, so here you can see we have some other options like for data uh, for the processing and for the training for the model training and also also for the hyperparameter training and uh, here for the inference means for making prediction our model and the endpoint will be stored here in this location here you can see models and endpoint so all these things we will see in the further classes okay and uh, one more thing here you can see sage maker examples so i think if you click on this here we are getting the uh, different examples. Right? Here you have different examples like uh, beast cancer prediction, churn prediction, candy card fraud detector. So these are the examples. If you want to use it, here we have option. Right? So here you have so many examples of SageMaker. Oh, here you have also examples of uh, Amazon, some algorithms. And uh, jumpstart, hyperparameter training, SageMaker training compiler. So, but here the main thing uh, here we have some machine learning examples here. Okay, so here we have got this page. I think uh, it might be slow. So I think uh, it also depends on the internet speed. Let's get uh, another one. Now you can see untitled one. So we can just give some name to this notebook. Demo, ML. Here you can see the name is Demo ML. This one, or we can just uh, delete. Right? We can delete this untitled.ipython notebook. Okay. So here you can write your Python code. Let's write x equal to 9, x plus 6. If we run this, we are getting the output, right? So here you can write your Python code. Okay, now let's start with <coughs> NumPy. So NumPy is a Python library that we can use to deal with end dimension array. It is an open source Python library used for working with arrays. It stands for numerical Python. The array object in NumPy is called ND array. It provides a lot of supporting functions that make 
working with and the error variation. So while implementing machine learning, we need to store our data in the form of array, right? We need to store our data in the form of array so that we can pass the data into our model in the format of array. Most of the algorithms accept the data in the form of array. So here first we will see some basics of array, how to create a one dimension array, how to create a two dimension array, right? how, how to do indexing and slicing, and also some other inbuilt functions of NumPy. So let's create a one dimension array. Create a one dimension array. So we need to import NumPy. NumPy as NP. If you want to install NumPy, so the command is, uh, you can also install NumPy from this Jupyter Notebook. Otherwise, you can uh, you have to install it using your terminal. So pip install NumPy. Right? So this is one of the options to install the NumPy. Okay. Let's check whether it is installed or not. Import NumPy SNP. You can see we are getting no error. It means this library has installed already. Now oh, we can create our dimension array. So np dot np dot array. We can pass here data. Data we can pass in the form of list. So two, three, four, five, and uh, x equal to. So np dot array, and we are passing here data in the form of list. And list is a collection of different or might be same data types. So we want to convert, uh, or we can say uh, we want to convert this list in the form of array. Next, we want to print the x. You can see we are getting a here, here we are getting an array. This is not a list, right? So guys, don't get confused. This is not a list. This is an array. So if you uh, okay, uh, I'll show you how we can say uh, x is an array here. In Python, we have a type function. We have an inbuilt function type, and we can check the data type here. And you can see we are getting the data type is npy numpy dot nd array. Means this x is an object, right? X is an object of this class nd array. Right? So this x is an array, right? This is not a list. So X is a one dimension array. How to check whether it is a one dimension or two dimension. So X dot NDIM, which is a attribute of this array, X dot NDIM. You can see the dimension is one. Next, uh, if you want to access some element, let's see how we can access elements. So x of index zero, and you can see at index zero, we have two, at index one, three, and so on. If you want to do, if you want to x is the last element, we can pass minus one. We are getting five. And so you can see the indexing is similar uh, that uh, you have seen uh, in the basics of Python, right? So that is very similar here. Slicing we can also perform here. We can pass the start position and end position. So let's say we want to display three and four. So we can pass uh, the start position one column. And the stop position is, uh, if we want to display four, so we have to pass the index number of this last element, five. So zero, one, two, three. We can pass it three. Okay. The element of the stop point will not be included in the output. Okay. Always keep in mind the element of the last element, but the element of the end point will not be included in the output. Means in the output we will get the value at the index one and the value at the index two. Right, the value at the index three we will not get in the output. 
So we will get here three and four. You can see in the output we are getting three and four. So this is how we can do slicing. This is slicing. This is slicing. Means we want to extract some elements between a given range, right? And this range uh, in this example, uh, we have given range one column three. And this is indexing. This is called indexing, right? And this is called slicing. So indexing means we want to access an element at the given index number. This is called indexing. And this is called slicing. Okay, next we have how to create a two dimension array. Create a two dimension array. Because in the entire machine learning, we will see our two dimension data, right? We will talk about two dimension data. So let's create a two dimension array. Two dimension array means uh, we have data in the form of rows and columns. Means we have some rows and we have some columns. So ND, so not ND, NP dot array. And here uh, we will pass a list of list. Here in the case of one dimension array, we have just passed a single list. But here in the case of two dimension, we will pass a list of list. So one comma two comma three, then four comma five comma six. So x one equal to this, and display x one. You can see here. Oh, uh, this is a two dimension array means we have two rows and we have three columns, right? If you want to check the shape of this X1 array, uh, we can access the attribute shape. So we are getting output in the form of tuple. And in, and in this tuple, first we are getting number of rows and then we are getting number of columns. We have two rows and three columns, right? So this is a two dimension. If you want to check the dimension, we can use NDIM attribute here. You can see the dimension is two here. Okay. okay. Next, let's perform here indexing and slicing. So how we can access uh, first element, or we can say uh, we want to access a first row. So in the case of a two dimension, the first row we have at index zero. Second row we have at index one, right? And it will be so on. Similarly for the columns, the first column we have at index zero, second one at index one, then at index two. We can also do here negative indexing, means at index minus one, we have this last row, at index minus two, we have the second last row. Okay, let's display here first row. So X1 and uh, let's pass here index zero. You can see we are getting the first row, right? If you want to display one, right? If you want to display element one, we can pass here, let's say one more zero. Now we are getting one, right? So this is how we can access the first row. If you want to access the last row, Let's uh, either we can pass one or let's try with minus one. You can see the negative uh, indexing we can also implement here four, five, six in the last row. Now we want to access columns. So let's say we want to display two, three, five, six. So X of uh, so here uh, we need to implement slicing. So we want to display this second column and third column. So first we have to pass the information about the rows. See, uh, slicing in the case of two dimension. Slicing in two dimension. So we have to pass first information about the rows or the row that we want to select then colon and then we have to pass the information about the columns okay so here in uh, in this two three five six we have two rows 
we are getting two rows so we want to select all the rows colon we can pass to select all the rows and if we don't pass any information about the column so by default we will get all the columns i'll show you you can see in the output sorry not x x1 you can see we are getting all the rows and all the columns right but here uh, we want to display only last two columns so we can put the comma sorry not colon here it should be comma so first we can give information about the rows comma then we can give information about the columns so one column so we can also do slicing while giving the information about columns or about rows so one column means here uh, we want to access the column that will start from index one you can see two three five six right this is called slicing so indexing and slicing we can do while uh, we can do in the two dimension array next uh, uh, we have np dot a range so this is uh, on so this is uh, another way to create a one dimension array np dot range let's see how we can use it so m equal to np dot a range and uh, we can pass some information like we can pass the start position the stop position and the step point and this a range function is very similar to the range function that you you might have covered in the python so we can pass start position comma stop position five again the stop position will not be included in the output you can see we are getting one two three four five we are not getting if we want to include five we have to pass six now we will get the five here okay. so here we are getting output as a one dimension array right this is a one dimension array but if you want to reshape it means uh, we want to convert this one dimension array into two dimension right or we want to just change the shape of this array we can use a reshape we can use a reshape method so here we here we have to mention the rows and columns so in the output we want uh, total number of elements we have five so uh, suppose if we want to convert it into two comma three means we need two into six six element sorry two into three six element if you want to convert it into two uh, two comma two so here we need four elements but here we have five so let's take here let's uh, make it uh, element six so let's create an array in which we have six element you can see we have six elements now we can reshape it into two comma three 2 comma 3 or we can say 3 comma 2 right or 1 comma 6 or 6 comma 1 right means we have to use all the elements right in the new array now you can see we are getting a two dimension array 2 comma 3 we can also pass here 3 comma 2 we are get now we are getting here an array the shape is 3 comma 2 we have three rows and two columns we can also pass uh, 1 comma 6 means one row and six columns right this is also two dimension this is not a one dimension this is a two dimension array where we have one row and six columns and we can also pass a six comma one means six row one column but if you pass something else like a, a two comma two two comma two so two comma two means uh, we want uh two comma two means uh we will have four elements right but here we have six so we will get an error here you can see cannot reshape array of size six into the shape right so we can you know so we can you know, pass the shape uh, that will use all the elements of an egg of an existing array right okay so this is how we can use amplitude a range so this is an another way to create our dimension array or two dimension array with the help of reshape method okay now uh, after this a range 
we want to perform matrix multiplication matrix okay or before this uh, let's find here unique numbers unique elements because uh, sometimes in uh, machine learning we have to find the unique elements form of our data okay. or we can say form a specific column so whatever data we have sometimes we have to find unique elements so let's see how to find unique elements so now we need a uh, one dimension array here so let's take here this one uh, let's create here another array and p dot array we can pass a list so zero comma one comma two comma one comma zero comma two comma three and we want to get all the unique elements so s3 dot let's see the method we have i think uh, okay let's call here unique oh uh, we don't have this uh i think uh let me see okay uh, there might be some another method to find all the unique elements no okay uh, let's check num5 unique values here okay we have to call uh, we have to call np dot unique right instead of x dot unique we have to call not x3 it should uh, np dot unique you can see we have this method and we can pass in x3 now we are getting unique elements in the assigning order 0 1 2 3 okay. this is how we can find unique elements even uh, if we have all the strings still we can find unique elements suppose we have a string here or uh, suppose here we have uh, uh, some uh, genre of the movies like uh, action or comedy or drama again action drama so these are the some genres of the movies and we want to get the unique values you can see we are getting unique values action comedy drama and this is the data type here right but we need only unique values here right this is how we can find unique values i think uh, we can also find the counts you can see the option return counts if you want to get some inbuilt documentation of any function we can just press shift and tap you can see shift and tap and uh, here we are getting some information you can see shift and tap right so here also we want to display their counts so return counts equal to true you can see so action elements we have two times comedy one and drama two times okay so these are the counts these are the unique values and these are the counts this is how we can use unique you can see zero one two and if you want to get counts we can pass return counts okay now if you want to get the sum of all the elements Suppose we have M3, not M3, X3, and we want to display the sum. So we can we can use np dot sum and we can pass here X3. The sum is four. Right? The sum we are getting four. Let's display the elements. So these are the elements, and uh, we are getting the sum four okay now here we have this array m right and we want to get all the elements that are greater than four right we want to display all the elements which are greater than four so if suppose if we write m greater than four if we run 
only this command we will get the output as a rest true or false you can see we are getting true or false so m greater than 4 this condition is false here because m is less than 2 is also less than 3 is also and this condition is also not true right but this condition is true 5 is greater than 4 6 is 6 is also greater than 4 so we are getting a true now instead of true we want to get actual values 5 and 6 so this output we can pass into the actual array that is m here now we are getting 5 and 6 you can see okay. so if you want to perform some condition on an existing array we can use this command okay. so after this np dot uh, okay so uh, we have seen some functions some methods right how to deal with one dimension and two dimension array similarly we can find the mean if you want to get the mean we can use m dot mean right 3.5 we can also get uh median not uh okay uh, we can get max not uh i think uh okay let's try with np dot median you can see here we have this we can pass m dot median at st.5 also so guys uh, i think it is enough for today's session in the next session we will talk about pandas okay after this numpy we will talk about pandas so pandas is a data analysis tool means we can analyze our data right so in the next session we will talk about pandas okay guys so let's wind up the session and let's meet in the next class thank you